uh, Senator Toomey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for uh, kindly uh, delaying the start of this uh, hearing. Thank you to the witnesses for your patience. I was unavoidably uh, delayed. I appreciate the accommodation. Today's hearing, of course, is about new consumer financial products. In the last decade, we've seen financial institutions develop technology-oriented solutions to meet consumers' needs. These new choices create a more competitive marketplace, all of which benefits consumers. As long as consumers have truthful and accurate information about financial products, it's the consumers who are best positioned to decide what products to use. Any regulation of financial products should fit the product type, make room for innovation, and maximize consumer choice. Too often, however, the response from some of my friends on the other side of the aisle is to see something new and panic. Let's talk about some of these new products. One of them is called the Pay Now, Pay Later, or I'm sorry, Buy Now, Pay Later, or BNPL. BNPL typically allows consumers to make purchases now, often online, and repay them in four interest-free installments later. This service can be a very attractive way for consumers to manage their cash flows to obtain goods and services <clears throat> without having to pay any interest. That's especially true for consumers who don't have or don't want to use a credit card for such purchases. This may explain why BNPL is most popular among younger consumers who have shorter credit histories. If customers are late with payments, BNPL companies sensibly suspend further purchases until they're paid, and some charge a late fee. Interestingly, BNPL companies do not primarily make their money from consumers at all, but rather from retailers who pay them a small percentage of transactions to offer the service to customers. Retailers are willing to do this because they don't have to pay credit card interchange fees on, on BNPL payments, and offering BNPL can increase sales and customer loyalty. Another newer financial product that provides consumers with short-term funding is Earned Wage Access, or EWA. This service can be appealing, an appealing alternative to payday loans for workers who want an advance on their wages. Many people don't have savings available to pay for unexpected expenses that can arise in between pay periods, like car repairs or a medical bill. EWA can help consumers to meet such expenses and others by advancing them the amount of income they've already earned at that point in the pay period. Now, there are various EWA products available. In some cases, employers select and pay the fee for the service as an employee benefit, while in others, consumers must pay the fee. According to a recent study, the average fee a user paid per advance was between $2.59 and $6.27. That's less than 5% of the amount advanced. In short, the marketplace competition has successfully generated more and cheaper online options for many consumers to meet their needs. This is a reminder that market competition is typically better at helping consumers than the government, whether the product or service is in the financial sector or some other category. Other newer financial products include forms of credit that have existed for a long time, but with innovations in how they're provided. In recent years, financial institutions, primarily community banks, have begun to partner with financial technology companies, or fintechs, to offer improved products and reach more consumers. Bank fintech partners offer a large variety of credit products, including small dollar, personal, auto, and small business loans, as well as credit cards, mortgages, and home equity credit lines. And these partnerships can generate significant consumer benefits by lowering the price of financial products, expanding consumer choice, and increasing competition. Often they provide access to credit for higher risk borrowers, such as consumers with lower incomes or no credit history, all through a highly supervised financial institution. Unfortunately, some bureaucrats and some law lawmakers uh, seem to react with hostility to almost any new financial products. Democrats in Congress have majority branded bank fintech partnerships in general as rent-a-bank schemes. Last year, they overturned an OCC rule that provided regulatory certainty for these partnerships. Unfortunately, by attacking legitimate bank fintech partnerships, our Democratic colleagues risk restricting access to needed credit for lower income consumers. And then there's the CFPB. Under Director Chopra, the CFPB has repeatedly demonstrated hostility to innovation in consumer finance markets. For example, Director Chopra has replaced the CFPB's Office of Innovation with the new Office of Competition and Innovation in order to advance his efforts to involve the CFPB in antitrust and competition law which is outside its jurisdiction. 
He also sidelined the Office of Innovation's programs to foster responsible innovation, such as no-action letters and regulatory sandboxes. I'm also concerned that the CFPB will bring this reactive anti-innovation perspective to its scrutiny of new, new financial products. Already, it's made public statements that suggest hostility towards BNPL and other products. All this hostility to new financial products is further evidence of the condescension and paternalism that we see sometimes in financial regulation. Individual consumers are better positioned than any bureaucrat or politician to understand their own individual needs and preferences and to make their own choices. Some of my colleagues ignore the benefits consumers derive from access to more choices in a more dynamic marketplace. The best form of consumer protection is a robust competitive market. That's why instead of curtailing new financial products, regulation should facilitate innovation and consumer choice. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.